Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a video on uh, buying your first telescope. And uh, I would advise that if you haven't seen that one first, that, that particular video first, go and watch that first. I'll leave a link in the description. There might be one of them tab things pop up. Uh, because in this video, I'm just going to uh, go across some more finer details that I think it's important enough that I missed in the first one. Even though in the first one I did go into quite a lot of detail, uh, there's just a few uh, little finer uh, points, like I say, that I, th I think it's important uh, just to make you aware of. Because telescopes can be uh, one of the most exciting things to buy and also one of the most disappointing things you can buy, it, especially if you don't go into it with the right expectations, okay? Because th there's a lot of fancy pictures on the internet and such like, you know, and, and you think this is what you're going to see through your telescope. And uh, So like I say, anyway, go and have a look at that video. Um, I would recommend going and have a look at that video first. And I'll go into a lot more detail into the telescopes. And I'll just, uh, like I say, go through some of the finer points, anyway, that I missed. Uh, now... These are not in any particular order, um, but it's often questions that crop up. Um, daytime use. Can you use your telescope in the daytime? Well, yes, uh, is the simple answer to that. Uh, you can use any telescope, um, whatever, it's, whatever design, of any size in the daytime. But it has limits, okay? Um, and the... First problem you're going to find is actually getting something into focus, okay? The problem is with the um, astronomical telescopes is they're designed for power, okay? Um, unlike binoculars, which have got a low power. I mean, if you consider like this telescope here, um, this little refractor here, it may be really small, but it'll magnify 140 times. Now, if you compare that to a pair of binoculars, now, you're getting into high-powered binoculars when you get round about 12 times and above, okay? And, and if you've ever looked through any, you know, binoculars, you can, you can see how, how powerful they look. And uh, this is going to be the problem in the daytime. You're just simply not going to get things into focus, okay? Um, so, yes, you can uh, definitely use... Um, lost my notes, I, just, I don't want to lose notes, I don't want to forget anything again. So yes, you can use them in the daytime, but like I say, it's just not really practical um, with astronomical telescopes. Uh, now that brings me on to uh, point number two. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, th this is a, a very common question that I've heard that people will bring into uh, telescope suppliers, you know, when they first bought a telescope, when they first looked through it, and they think it's broken because when they look through it, everything is upside down and back to front, okay? Now, don't worry. All telescopes, astronomical telescopes, are like this, okay? When you look through it, you, the image will be upside down and back to front, okay? Um, this is just how astronomical telescopes are. Um, and, it's, and it's due to really, you've got no reference in, uh, in the night sky, okay? Like if you was watching a, a bird on the bird table, okay, it wouldn't be an upside down bird, okay? Do you see what I'm saying? If you're looking at the moon, you've got nothing really to reference it against, uh, against the night sky. Because after all, in space, there is no up, down, left or right. Now... Can you actually get something to turn that image the right way up? So you would be, you know, be a bit easier to uh, use in the daytime. And the answer to that is yes. Um, now, they usually come... Uh, this isn't one. This is just a standard uh, diagonal. Uh, but in refractors like this, you can get something that looks similar to this. This is just a diagonal. But instead of it being a mirror in there, there will be a prism. OK, and uh, that will uh, correct the image. All right. And just put everything the right way around, because if you do want to use a telescope for, say, bird spotting, which I don't really recommend it, something like this, a small refractor, you could probably get away with as long as it's a good way away. You know what I mean? A good hundred yards or something like that, because you, like I say, you're just not going to get the focus. But say if you were using whoops, it's been a trademark of this channel, me throwing dust covers all over the place. 
Here we go again. <laughs> um, yeah, so like if you're watching a bird, when it hops to the left, you're going to have to move the telescope to the right. And when it hops to the right, you'll have to move the telescope to the left without a correction, without one of these in. Okay, you put one of these in and everything will be okay. Um, now you can get something similar for reflectors. Um, I, I believe you can still get them. I've never actually bought one ever so I've never had the uh, desire to have one but they're like a Barlow lens if you know what a Barlow lens is uh, something that's uh, it's like a tube that you put the actual eyepiece in and again it's got a series of lenses in the uh, correctional eyepiece which will throw everything the right way around now um, apart from these being really impractical for like I say for, for astronomical telescopes I wouldn't advise using them for uh, astronomy use okay I'm not saying you can't use uh, correctional um, uh, image correctors we'll call them image, image correctors for astronomical use it's just that it's not advice it's not really suitable okay um, because like I said in the first video uh, what you'll quickly find with telescopes is you need as much light coming into that telescope as you possibly can get it's, uh, get. it's not so much the magnification that counts with the telescope it's how wide it is okay the wider it is the more light it can get in now when you uh, put these correctional um, eyepieces or image correctors on you're introducing more glass or lenses now this is going to cut down obviously the light because whenever light goes through any type of glass um, it, you're going to lose some of it basically and plus the fact it will probably introduce a lot of false colour so they're not really you, can, you know I'm not saying you, you can't use them for astronomical uh, use but they're just not really advisable um, now then um, kids telescopes um, or telescopes actually designed for kids and I, now I'm not talking about um, these type of telescopes all right these proper <laughs> kids telescopes kinder kids telescopes no all right they are toys I want about is this such a thing as a proper astronomical <laughs> can't put my teeth back in <laughs> a proper astronomical telescope designed for kids or aimed at kids of course, any telescope's uh, really suitable for a child as long as you know you use your parenting initiative. You know, if if the kid's old enough to um, have a telescope and use it on its own, or if it's not, I mean, it's like you know, toddlers and and, and four or five year olds. Of course, they can you know have a look through a telescope, but as one as a present, I mean, usually that age group, uh, you know, it's classed as a toy, isn't it? So I would really class the telescope as a toy. I suppose as they get older, it's definitely an educational toy. I suppose you could put it in the category of. Um, but like I say, uh, going back to is there actually a, a telescope aimed at kids? Then yeah, there is. And the first one that springs to mind, and I'm sure this is still in production, I'm sure it is, is the uh, Skywatcher Infinity 76. Uh, now, these are fantastic little telescopes, actually. They're a little three-inch uh, reflecting telescope. It's a full-blown full parabolic mirror in those, um, <coughs> which is uh, what you get on the more higher-end uh, telescopes. Now, the great things about these is they've got a fixed eyepiece, so there's no eyepiece for them to lose. Um, uh, they can actually wear them, they come with a little neck strap actually so you can actually wear them around the neck and use it that way they can be used in the daytime but of course you've still got the problem of everything being upside down and back to front um, but like I said they are uh, pretty uh, indestructible really for kids uh, I, I mean apart from if you're gonna you know they're gonna be throwing toys down in, in, in the delicate mirror but you know that's just uh, kids being kids isn't it but uh, but the other good thing about these uh, telescopes about these uh, Skywatch Infinity 76 is they don't need collimation okay even though they are a reflecting telescope they don't need any collimation so they're, they're pretty much straight out of the box and uh, yeah they are they're definitely oh the other really nice feature about them is the mount that they come on they come on a kind of uh, Dobsonian I suppose uh, type mount it's like a ball they're, uh, they have such an odd shaped telescope and they fit on like a pedestal 
Um, I really think they should introduce this method into bigger telescopes. I mean, I'm thinking, of, I seriously, I'm thinking of doing something with this. I built this uh, little dob mount for it. And uh, I wonder how much of a challenge it would be to put a big ball on the end of it, you know what I mean? And have one of these uh, infinity. Oh, what was it now? I can't think of the name. The, um, there was another telescope, the, the red one. Oh, I'll flash the name up on the screen. Uh, the name uh, escapes me in a minute. I don't think they're in production, but I'm sure the Skywatch uh, Infinities are still around. Now, that brings me on to collimation, because in the last video I mentioned about collimation, and obviously this type of telescope, reflecting type telescopes, uh, need collimated. Uh, you can get fixed mirrors in uh, reflecting type telescopes so if you do fancy uh, a reflecting uh, style of telescope and collimation does scare you a little bit they are available okay uh, with these fixed mirrors now I wasn't really a fan of these when they first come out purely because I've never tried one and I still haven't really tried one but I have heard really good things about them um, they're meant to hold collimation really well and, and People that I have talked to that do own them so they've never had any issues with them. I think you can still adjust the secondary mirror uh, inside. I think the, the, this uh, secondary mirror here, I think you can still collimate that, I believe. Uh, but they are available, so there's another option for you, okay? If you're um, looking to buy a, a reflecting telescope, uh, just ask about um, fixed mirrored telescopes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I think we're about, I've about covered it now, so they're the main points that I, that I think I missed, and I guarantee you that I'll uh, be editing this and go, I knew there was something else, <laughs> there'll be something else I'll, I've uh, forgot, but, uh, and, and finally, really, um, when it comes to actually buying a telescope, if you're still not sure whether astronomy is the hobby for you, don't forget, there's always binoculars, okay? Uh, binoculars are always going to be cheaper than, uh, well, they can be just as expensive as a telescope, but you can always get cheaper, you know, binoculars are on the more cheaper side of things. Have a go with those. Get yourself some star charts uh, and learn yourself a few constellations. See if you're enjoying that, uh, that stage of the hobby. You know what I mean? Because um, And even when you actually do buy a telescope, you'll find uh, that a lot of astronomers, including myself, will still do a lot of uh, astronomy with binoculars. Okay, so I hope that uh, these two videos now will uh, answer any questions or put any fears to rest of uh, buying your first telescope. Well, that's about it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, in the meantime... Take good care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.